austerity. By 2010, all roads lead to austerity. Richard Seymour. After the financial crash of 2008, when the banks destroyed the world's economy, somehow the credibility of neoliberalism was not questioned. Instead, the newly elected Tory coalition government, with the full cooperation of the mainstream media, began an intense campaign of propaganda. They told us it was not the bankers, we had spent too much money on schools and hospitals and must now suffer harsh, brutal cuts to pay for it. But it was a total lie, and one repeated across all media to a confused, economically illiterate public, with many believing it to be a necessary evil. Yet austerity was never intended to save money and reduce the deficit. It was always used as a cover story to destroy public services and remove the social safety nets. And it goes much deeper. Austerity is also a weapon of economic violence, wielded against the poor, and especially women. For the middle and upper classes, austerity was just something you read about, something that took place out of sight and mind. They would rationalise it away that if it was mostly hitting the poor, then maybe it was a good thing, as many of them were feckless scroungers who needed to start pulling their weight. A lot of people still don't know what austerity even means. In the leadership debates for the 2015 general election, one of the most commonly googled questions was, what is austerity? Austerity means a massive increase in malnutrition and starvation, with many mothers choosing to skip meals so their children can eat. Austerity means degrading and humiliating treatment of disabled people. Austerity means 120,000 deaths since 2010, according to a study by the University College London. But for many at the bottom of society, they are still suffering from 40 years of neoliberalism and deindustrialization. Austerity is simply another layer of misery. Capitalism is an irrational and immoral system. Crises, crashes and recessions are its natural conditions. But we are the ones who pay the price, whilst those at the top can always weather the storm. This is very evident in my hometown of Belper in Derbyshire. The Belper mills were first built in 1776 by Jedediah Strutt. In its time, the mill was considered the most technically advanced building in the world. It introduced mechanised cotton spinning and Belper was transformed into the world's first cotton mill town. At its height, it employed almost 2,000 people. Once a key component of the Industrial Revolution and of capitalism itself, it now lies mostly empty and destitute. A hollow relic of a bygone age, the free market has well and truly moved on. Next to the mills is the River Gardens Park. It was opened in 1906 by George Herbert Strutt. I came here many times as a child to feed the ducks and play on the swings. Gardens tea rooms were built in 1905 and closed in 1981. Despite popular local support for its return and a new design being approved, the Tory controlled council has consistently failed to supply the funds needed for it to be rebuilt and restored. It is something which constantly comes up when you go canvassing in Belper. They can't tear it down because it's a listed building. Instead, they will leave it to rot and fall apart. The perfect metaphor for our times. old English nursery rhyme that goes, 
They hang the man and flog the woman that steal the goose from off the common, but let the greater villain loose that steals the common from the goose. The law demands that we atone when we take things we do not own, but leaves the lords and ladies fine who take things that are yours and mine. Stephen Armstrong wrote, People with malnutrition accounted for 184,000 of hospital beds in 2015. The mortality figures from the ONS show 391 people dying from malnutrition over the year. This means 32 people starve to death in the UK every month, or one person every day. The use of food banks has also increased dramatically since 2010. Today, almost 4 million adults have used food banks for basic sustenance. These geese also bear the brunt of austerity. In more affluent times, you may casually take the end of a loaf of bread down to the park to feed the birds, or even buy one specifically for them. Now you'll make sure you eat the entire thing. Geese are naturally socialist creatures, common goose craves companionship. When people feed geese, they lose their natural fear of human beings and will nest closer to us. Geese will often refuse to leave a sick or injured goose behind, even if the rest of the group are flying south for the winter. They will stay with the disabled goose until it passes away or regains its strength. When a goose's mate dies, the goose will mourn in solitude and often won't mate again. According to Richard Rohr, in Celtic culture, before Christianity, the metaphor for God was of a wild goose. Geese of the world, unite! You have nothing to lose but your chains.